main member's statements. The member from Renfrew and Nipissing, Canberra. We will all recall the flooding that took place, place this spring along the watersheds of the Bonnechere, Madawaska and Ottawa Rivers. In fact, my riding was the first to be recognized for eligibility under the Disaster Recovery Assistance Program. While the program covers overland flooding, it does not cover erosion as a result of high water levels. The Indian and Muskrat Rivers experienced significant landslides as a result of the high water, undermining their banks. The landslides resulted in some homes being condemned and many more being threatened. Because the provincial program does not cover erosion, Minister Morrow directed us to apply to the Federal National Disaster Mitigation Program. Working together with the landslide victims, the City of Pembroke, and our Federal Member of Parliament, an application has been submitted. Both the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry have been most helpful in preparing this application. We're hopeful it will be successful, but if not, what then? This problem requires more resources than either the homeowners or the City of Pembroke could possibly provide. It cannot be left unresolved. Further erosion would result in more people having to leave their homes or possibly even seeing them slide into the river. While I appreciate the efforts of both Ministers M M Morrow and McGarry, we cannot forget these people and the threat they are facing. If this application is not successful, I do hope that the provincial government will find some way to help these people deal with the terrible situation they are facing. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members, a statement the member from Parkdale High Park. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of the striking faculty, uh, both part-time, sessional, contract, and full-time of our community colleges. This is a historic moment. It really is a watershed moment in, in post-secondary education because if they do not get their demands met, uh, we can look at the erosion and the privatization of our public school system at the post-secondary level. Uh, let me tell you what's at stake here. 81 per cent of the teachers in our community colleges now are part-time sessional or contract. Only 19 per cent are full-time faculty. And those part-time people at 81 per cent, most of them have no job security at all. Um, uh, many of them have no benefits. A lot of them make approximately minimum wage because they're paid only for the time in the classroom. And every teacher will tell you, especially at the post-secondary level, that's a very small portion of what their job actually entails. The difference would only be $300 million uh, for the college system, which, by the way, Mr. Speaker, is much less than they have in surplus. So they can afford equal pay for equal work. And by the way, this government is complicit because the Ontario College Council will not even meet. They won't even come to the table with the strikers. And again, this government is complicit. If they support the, the, uh, the principle of equal pay for equal work, they should support it for everyone, including their own employees. Thank you. Thank you. Further members' statement? The member from Brampton Springdale, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over, the, um, over 200 community leaders gathered at the Courtyard by Marriott in Brampton for the announcement of the United Way Region Appeals 2016 Compact uh, Community Impact. Sonia Boyle, Vice President of Human Resources at GE Canada, delivered the keynote address highlighting the importance of mental health in the workplace. During the event, United Way released its annual co uh, community impact report that highlights where donors' uh, dollars were strategically invested last year in Brampton, Caledon, and Mississauga to support those who are struggling. The United Way of Peel Region also recognized outstanding partners and dedicated frontline social service staff at this meeting. The United Way of Peel Region also uh, presented Suncor Energy and UPS Canada with the Thanks a Million Award. The Thanks a Million Award rec recognizes organizations that have raised $1 million or more in support of United Way in a one-year campaign. A friend and active volunteer, Edna Toth, was presented with the Community Partner Award, the award that is presented to somebody that has led our community to new levels of innovation and impact in Peel. Edna is a tireless anti-poverty advocate. The Bayana Family Foundation Awards, made possible by the generous donation of Madhan and Raksha Bayana and the Bayana Family Foundation, are peer-nominated awards that recognized extraordinary contributions made by staff at United Way-funded agencies. The awards have also been given out in Toronto, Calgary, Lower Mainland and York Region. Some of the award winners are Soma Banerjee, Malta Neighbourhood Services, Godwin Darkbar, Knight's Table, Jesse Murray, Nexus Youth Services, 
Deborah Langbin, Hope 24-7, Alicia Denon, Knight's Table, Nerlape Gill, Punjabi Community Health Services, Sangeet Arena, Malta Neighbourhood Services, Amelia Torres, Vita, uh, Vita Centre, and Raj Chandra, United Way, Peel Region. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm rising today to speak about the Child Welfare Political Action Committee. And today at Queen's Park, we have a group, um, including two accomplished young ladies, Jane Kovarakova and Megan Martin, and they're meeting with MPPs and their staff to advocate for better outcomes for youth in care. Included with the group are Paul Berenson, Karina Chan, Christy Dennett, Carlene Joseph, Amelia Mirhar, and Christine Bradley. And I just want to mention, Mr. Speaker, to everybody here that Jane and Megan overcame difficult childhoods, as did many of the others, and have joined forces as, as part of the Child Welfare Pack. They believe that an evidence-based and outcomes-driven child, child welfare system is the key to breaking the cycle and ensuring that kids succeed. Speaker, there was a recent study published that states nearly three out of every five homeless youth were part of the child welfare system at some point in their lives, a rate almost 200 times greater than that of the general population, and of those with a history in the child welfare system, almost two of every five respondents eventually aged out of provincial or territorial care, losing access to the sort of support that could have kept them from becoming homeless, the study found. There are unintended consequences and bad outcomes when young people leave care, and I just want to thank the girls for coming to my office earlier, and we had a very interesting discussion, and I really applaud all the work that they're doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Temiskamy Cochrane. Speaker, as we are all aware, faculty at colleges across Ontario are on strike. The issues are fairly straightforward. The vast majority of the faculty are on a part-time contract basis, 81 per cent, precarious part-time work with no benefits. This situation is not conducive to long-term quality education results. Our constituency offices have been contacted by students and their parents. They are worried about losing their semesters and the funds that they have invested in this term, as well as the longer-term opportunity costs if the work stoppage drags on. We have also been contacted by faculty who want to do what they do best, teach, but they are under intense pressure because of their precarious work situation. Emotions are running high and conditions could quickly deteriorate. I would like to make the legislature aware that on Thursday, a worker manning a picket line in Temiskaming Cochrane was struck by a vehicle which did not stop. The worker was injured and the OPP is continuing to investigate this incident. The right to strike is an important tool in our collective bargaining process. It is stressful on all sides, but it should never resort to violence. We urge the parties to get back to the bargaining table, and I implore the government to ensure that the funding is in place so that meaningful negotiations can be held. The ultimate goal being that students can continue to receive a quality education provided by faculty that are pa fairly paid for their work and skills. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to pay tribute to uh, a constituent of mine, Ross Skeen. Uh, Ross was a most talented actor, musician, and music teacher. Uh, he and his wife, Glenda Skeen, uh, were responsible for saving a heritage apartment building in the young uh, Lawrence area, one Cheriton Avenue, with their own hard work and dedication. Uh, Ross was a protege of uh, one of Toronto's theatre greats, George Luscombe, of the wow. Toronto Workshop Productions. And uh, he did every job there at Toronto Workshop and was an incredibly dedicated uh, theatre person and, as I said, music teacher. He taught the guitar and drums to countless young people in North Toronto for years. And he was an exceptional tenant advocate. He really was one of the uh, champions of tenants' rights for many years in North Toronto. And he was also involved with Neighbourhood Watch. He was helping seniors uh, constantly get their uh, food and uh, everything. So uh, Ross was a real uh, local uh, giant. Uh, we're going to miss him. And uh, he really contributed above and beyond the call of duty to the City of Toronto and to all his friends and neighbours. Uh, rest in peace, Ross.
Thank you. Further member Sanders, the member from Kitchener Conestoga. Yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. To, today I stand uh, to offer heartfelt congratulations to all those across Ontario who are taking part in fall convocation ceremonies at universities and colleges right across our province. Just like the bright colours beginning to turn in celebration of another season, convocation ceremonies mark the successful finale to an intense and sometimes difficult journey as dedicated students look toward the next steps for a brighter future. Speaker, given the significant challenges for many who are blessed with the opportunity to build their skills and knowledge through a post-secondary education, it is truly a special and proud accomplishment to be able to step forward with a diploma or degree in hand on the convocation stage. Often those challenges can only be overcome through the ongoing sacrifice and backing of family, friends and colleagues, providing an essential support network to help lift us to that next level, that next goal of graduation. And so, Speaker, I again, I want to congratulate all who realized that goal this convocation season and those who I was honoured to join at War Memorial Hall at the University of Guelph as we received our Masters in Leadership from the School of Business and Economics. I especially want to thank all of my MA classmates, congratulate them of course, who uh, I had many late night Skype chats uh, for group assignments and other activities over the course of the two years. I want to thank our university professors, of course my family, my staff, friends, colleagues and family. Speaker, learning is truly a lifelong journey and I thank all of those who help us take those next steps. Thank you, Speaker, for your time. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa Centre. Speaker, uh, today, Speaker, the government of Quebec is releasing its guidelines for Bill 62. In releasing these guidelines, it's using security and communications as justification. Bill 62 violates the basic rights of Muslim women who wear the niqab or burqa in Quebec. It is unacceptable that these women will be forced to choose between accessing important public services like health care, education, and public transit, and the freedom to express themselves. It is fundamentally wrong to violate their basic charter rights of freedom of expression and religion. A dangerous slippery slope has been embarked upon, singling out women who are already vulnerable targets to bullying and xenophobia. It is a law that discriminates. It is a law that diminishes the right to freedom of expression and religion that we all cherish. Last week, all members of this legislature voted unanimously to condemn Bill 62. Our work's not done. We all must continue to speak out in this legislature and in our communities against this legislation and all forms of discrimination. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Further members' statements. Member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to share some messages that I received via postcards from people around the Walkerton community, including Maldme, Formosa, Teeswater, and Chepstow. And they came to me to talk about a portable housing benefit. A portable housing benefit would index rental costs to income to ensure that rent does not exceed 30 per cent of OW or ODSP or their working poor's income. These postcards were forwarded on to me by the Walkerton and District Food Bank, and I think the messages were quite powerful. Marita wrote, people shouldn't have to choose between rent and food. Dorothy wrote that such a benefit would allow those needing affordable housing more resources for food, hydro, clothing, transportation, and other necessities, and most importantly, more independence. Mary Ann said, in my work with the local food bank, I see people who are living in unaffordable housing, which takes most of their income, hence the need to use our food bank. A portable housing benefit would be great. Therese wrote that she was a person many years ago that needed this program, and it's a struggle. So, Speaker, I want to let the minister know that I will be sending the full package of postcards on to him, and I hope he will consider these people's messages when developing housing policy in Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to call upon the Minister of Economic Development and Growth for a point of order. I just have a series of introductions, Mr. Speaker, and I'll go as quickly as I can, but I want to thank a number of guests that are here to hear a statement that we'll be making later on. Uh, Jennifer Canham from the Weston Foundation, Gloria Raisler, uh, Friends of the Rouge Watershed, Greg Grafham, Director of UTSC, U University of Toronto Scarborough Campus, The Hub, and a number of UTSC students, Caitlin Chow, Derek Etherton, uh, Alex Kavanaugh, 
uh, Dane Reed, Brian O. Uh, we also have Heather Rigby from Landover Landings, Anna Bay Baggio from Wild Wildlands League, Peter Kendall, Earth Rangers, G Boris Asiev, Park Bus Initiative, Serena and David Lowry uh, from Rouge Valley Foundation. I hope I got them all, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank them for joining us today and for their Welcome. very strong leadership. I'm glad you're with us. Reports by committees.